Python is now the number one programming language on GitHub after being ranked second since mid 2018. There's been a lot of change in software development in the last few years, but one thing is for sure, and that is every new piece of technology is pointing at Python. And that doesn't matter if we're talking about libraries, frameworks, AI, side projects, everything is pointing back to Python. However, those four items are not the only things contributing to Python's massive and continued growth. In this video, we're gonna be going over three things that is contributing to Python's overall success. and What that means to you as a Python developer. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over a decade of experience, and I've helped thousands of developers learn and grow within their craft. So the big news at GitHub is Python has surpassed JavaScript as the number one programming language on GitHub. And GitHub is the biggest um, like cloud repository there is. So it's a pretty big deal. If we go ahead and we take a look at what is going on here at GitHub, we can see that we're on Octaverse for today's current year. They start off with a really, really great sentence, and that's Remember when people said AI would replace developers? Our data tells a different story. And that's because AI and Gen AI is allowing more and more people to become developers rather than the opposite of removing developers due to Gen AI. It's kind of doing the reverse effect where more people are able to get into the field. So if we kind of skim through this a little bit, we can see that the very first thing it's saying is 518 million total projects on GitHub with 25% year over year growth. So 518 million total software projects on GitHub. 5.2 billion contributions of projects on GitHub in 2024. Over 1 million open source maintainers, verified students and teachers have used GitHub Copilot at no cost. 1 billion contributions to public and open source projects in 2024. 137,000 public generative AI projects. And this is huge. I mean, look at this. 98% growth of public generative AI project since last year. That means AI is becoming a big thing. And Python overtakes JavaScript as the number one language. And GitHub kind of gives a quick overview of the three biggest trends, which is a surge in global generative AI activity. And that's really just because AI is getting more and more popular. More people are getting familiar with how to use generative AI. It's no longer just like tech savvy people. Um, people are able to you know figure out how to do prompts and create things that they want to create. Um, a rapid growing number of developers worldwide, especially in Africa, Latin America, and Asia. And one thing that I really um, thought was really cool here was growth in India. India is expected to have the world's largest developer population on GitHub by 2028. So if you live in India, you are going to be part of the world's largest developer population. And that's all taking place in India. And then the last thing was Python is now the most used language on GitHub as a global open source activity continues to extend beyond traditional software development. And this one's really big. And I think my take on this is Python is used against machine learning, data science, data analytics, um, and data engineering. And those are really big fields that are getting even more popular with LLMs, NLP, um, and just Gen AI in general. And some of the things that really stick out with that is Gen AI, Open AI, all of their SDKs work best with Python, right? So a lot of these startup companies that are integrating um, you know, open AI into their software or Claude, they're doing that using Python. And then on top of it, if you want to learn more about AI, you can do artificial intelligence with, you know, Java, JavaScript, any of those languages, but it's by far more popular with Python due to the libraries and frameworks that we have already. And that's really with like Jupyter Notebook, PyTorch. I mean, they go on and on. There's so many different areas that are really AI, data engineering, and data science specific. Now, the state of open source, this part made me really, really excited. And that means open source is growing. And open source really just means someone else is building stuff and allowing you to use it for free. Um, the, the biggest one that I use is FastAPI. And I, software development would not be where it is today without open source. So 
about 1 billion contributions to public and open source projects in 2024, which is freaking amazing, guys. 15% year-over-year spike in JavaScript package consumption via Node Package Manager. And then no, and then Jupyter Notebooks um, usage surges. So that's another like data science, AI, kind of like notebook slash IDE. Someone's going to correct me on that term, but it's a way for you to be able to just kind of like run Python um, in a certain area. So now let's go ahead and look at the state of generative AI in 2024. So 70,000 generative AI projects started. I mean, really think of that number. 70,000 Gen AI projects have been started. 137,000 public generative AI projects with 98% growth since last year, which, I mean, that's absurd to me. And then AI models being part of the developer stack. So that just means like you're using Copilot or OpenAI or something like that to help you with your development. And here we can see a little graph of the number of public generative AI projects. And we can just see that whoosh, just skyrockets to 100 and almost 50,000, 130 something to be exact. So here's a really interesting one, and this is the state of security and automation in 2024. Um, developers across GitHub use secret scanning to detect more than 39 million, 39 million security leaks. Um, we saw developers and open source communities respond more quickly to security incidents, which is good due to AI security tools, which leads to faster fixes, but if those security issues were created by Gen AI, then then hypothetically there's going to be a lot of security issues in the future with um, Gen AI. And the most common security vulnerability is injection, which is probably what I would have guessed. So if we looked at the graph of the most common types of vulnerabilities found in um, CodeQL, which is um, GitHub's code quality test, there's injection, broken access control. Insecure design, identification. Yeah, I mean, these are all just like really big issues. I mean, if you really think about it, we're saying like like injection. That could be like SQL injection. That could be um, supply chain injection. There's a whole bunch of different kind of injections when it comes to that. But then there's also, we're saying identification, authentication, authorization, security misconfigurations. Now, those could definitely be created by people, but it could also really be created by AI. So, if you're using code generated by AI or you're using anything else like that, we really need to really be conscious about security and automation going into the new year and really make sure that as AI evolves and as developers and as there becomes more developers that we're really taking it seriously um, with security. And here's a really good, great one is the most popular programming language. And we can see that Python beats out JavaScript as the most popular language. However, another big thing that I noticed is TypeScript grows to be the third most popular language. And that actually shocked me. That shocked me big time. Well, kind of shocked me. So TypeScript can be used on the front end and back end, right? Just like JavaScript. So when it's saying the most popular programming languages, JavaScript and TypeScript do have a little bit of an advantage that they're on every web page and they can be used as a back end programming language. And I've seen a lot of startups um, kind of use a full stack approach using JavaScript and TypeScript. So the whole application is going to be wrote with HTML, CSS, and then JavaScript or TypeScript on the front end. And then the back end is also using JavaScript or TypeScript. So that's just going to create an absurd amount, amount of lines of code um, long term. And when it comes to PR, so one thing that I, I think we should really note, um, where is it? So in here, it's saying Python surpassed it. But this is based on activity. So Python, JavaScript, Java, C Sharp, C++, PHP, Shell, C, and Go. Then there's like Ruby and Objective-C that were um, in the past. This is based on activity. So this is um, code being checked in through PRs. This is like issues getting tackled, um, new projects getting started. There's a lot of different things it goes into. When it comes to just straight PRs, I want to say that it said JavaScript was the most popular when it comes to just straight PRs getting checked in. But when it comes to distinct users contributing to projects of each language, so these are distinct, unique users. So number of people, Python is now number one. So right here, this is, this is it right here. So how do we calculate the most used languages on GitHub? We look at total totality, totality of activity across commits, issues, pull requests, comments on issues, and pull requests 
discussions, pushed code, and reviewed pooled code, among other things. So this helps us um, figure out what programming language is the most popular, and that's where Python wins. If we're gonna take anything with us, what are the three main things that we wanna take with us going into the new year and just figuring everything out? And that's generative AI models are becoming core building blocks in software development. Um, the global community of developers on GitHub is expanding rapidly, which is great. That means there's going to be more engineers. And the notion of who a developer is and the scope of what a developer does is changing. Going to the new year, just make sure that, you know, you, you have your mindset and you're, and you're ready to tackle some of these things that is showing how the software development world is changing. So until next time.